Hey friends, it's Amber from Gear, Glasses, and Gadgets, and today we're going to be talking to Daniel Knight from Studio B Photography. Did you get that on Snapchat? <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Daniel Knight from Studio B Photography. He is a local photographer in the Evansville area and I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about himself. Um, well, I got started in photography as a high school kid uh, and, and in fact as a sophomore in high school and in fact that goes all the way back to the early 70s. And uh, had some great opportunities there, had an art teacher that said, hey, you do photography and I'll give you an art grade for it, and became immersed in photography completely at that point. Um, and it was like, um, it was like uh, right after I graduated from high school, I got an opportunity to work at a local camera store. So I worked at this lap local camera store for about five years in sales and about another five years in management and then five more years managing a, a, a professional photography division and I don't remember the math exactly. I worked there for 22 years wow. and I got a, an opportunity to move forward and become a professional photographer and that's what I did and I did that in 1995. And so, uh, and of course obviously we were still very, and we're still in very in a film kind of world at that point. Shot film for years and years and years. In fact, uh, the math is I shot film for about 35 years of my life before I began shooting digitally um, and slipped into digital uh, very gradually as a business, which I'm really grateful for because unlike uh, a lot of studios that were figuring out what to do and moving toward digital photography, uh, somehow we managed to do it without turning out a bunch of crummy photography yeah. because there was that time when digital wasn't yeah quite great. it wasn't quite great but people were saying hey wow look at this it's digital and you're going yeah it looks like digital you <laughs> know <laughs> right so, right. so um, anyway um, did that um, the success, business was very successful we actually operated out of our home for seven years uh, and 14 years ago built this studio and uh, which pulled us into an entirely, it, it really raised the bar for, for our business uh, and it really opened a lot of doors for us. And uh, it was a big thing, but it was a good thing. You know, sure. it was really walking out on a limb when we did that. Um, early on, as soon as I started, I had been shooting, uh, uh, at that point I had been shooting Canon 35mm uh, SLRs, Canon EOS 1s, uh, and uh, uh, is that what we called them? Yeah, it was an EOS-1. Um, and uh, then I guess it was uh, in the late, it was like 1999 or something like that, I think that we bought our first uh, Canon digital SLRs. And until a couple of years ago, that's what we, we had been shooting. Very interesting. Now, backing up just slightly, um, what type of photography were you doing whenever you st branched into your own company? Is that did it start out as Studio B or? It started out. It, 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 uh, yes, it did. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, because I uh, I moved st uh, away from uh, a, a job uh, to self-employment. Uh, thank God, goodness, my wife is uh, an RN, and she was able to go to work for a while and just kind of help support us a little bit. And as it turns out, in that particular time frame, my brother, my older brother, had a photography studio. And he used his name for his business name, and therefore it wouldn't, simply wasn't cool for me right. to use my name and my business name. It would be, it was confusing enough, it would only have made it more confusing. So we had to come up with a name. We had thought at one point that we might actually convert our old barn into a studio, and that we might call it Studio B. Kind of became a nickname as we talked and planned, you know. And so suddenly when it was kind of time to name it, it was just like, it was kind of named already. Cool. And what type of photography were you doing then? I was doing people. People. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. A lot of wedding work, especially in the beginning. Uh, 
high school seniors, family portraits. Uh, in a lot of ways, not a lot different than what I do now. Interesting. So you're mm -hmm. still doing all of those. What, is, what mm -hmm. is your main focus or specialty currently? High school seniors uh, are certainly one of the big things that I do. Uh, we do, again, we do a lot of general portraiture, uh, which means that it could be anything from uh, a family or a couple uh, to, uh, I just had, just got an email yesterday from someone that wants to come out and do uh, 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 an author portrait for a book jacket, cool. that kind of thing. So uh, it's people, you know, if it's people, that's pretty much what I do. Let's talk about what we were talking about earlier about how um, beyond the gear, what what is it about photography, um, f photographing people that you like and what type of skills do you need? Well, um, <clears throat> it's interesting because I've thought about that a lot and in fact went through a period of a few years ago when I was sort of questioning what I did. It kind of felt like, uh, it felt insignificant, not that important. You know, it's like, you know, why aren't I feeding starving children or sure. something like that? You know, instead I'm taking frivolous photos of people who can afford them, you know, right. that kind of thing. Right. And uh, so I, I, I kind of I fairly quickly came around on that when some things happened and I realized how important what I did was to them. I uh, had a customer whose home burned and uh, they contacted us and wanted to order reprints and copies of things that were burned in the fire and we're just like forever grateful that we had the negatives on file and were able to order reprints and that kind of thing for them. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and anyway, so it kind of came out of that pretty quickly. And, and what happens is, I think as a photographer is, you know, the first thing you do is you get um, you, you learn about photography uh, and you kind of hopefully you kind of get that mastered and then you learn about composition and you learn about light and and you learn posing and all those things and it's interesting because what happens is and I think this is a natural progression but the last thing you learn about in the end is kind of like the most important thing the last thing you learn you really really get good at generally is actually working with people and helping them relax, getting natural smiles and expressions and that sort of thing. And I, when I hear from people about how much they love what I do, almost always they comment about how I bring the best out in people. And to me that's like a huge compliment because it's Absolutely. like, you know, it's like that's what it's all about. You know, Absolutely. In the end. That's great. And you had spoke before a little bit about like how you want your clients to feel whenever they leave your, your studio. Can you talk about how you want your clients to feel whenever they leave Studio B? Yeah, so that kind of plays into that comment sure. because, because uh, it, I feel like it's really, really important. It's important in any business and I think sometimes it's maybe even more important in our business for a variety of reasons. Uh, I want them to have a good experience. I want them to have fun, I want them to be comfortable, I want them to love what we're doing, I want them to like me, you know, sure. which is, you know, you'd, and, could, which is part of the deal, you know. Um, and uh, when we can accomplish that, when I can have fun with people and they can get, you know, and get great results and, and so on, what happens is, and what makes this possibly even more important than other businesses, is that every time they look at the photos, unconsciously, part of what happens is they go back to the experience. I had someone show me a really great portrait one time that someone had done in another city, bigger, bigger city, uh, and uh, I, I, I don't recall what the whole conversation was, but they showed me this portrait. It was a really nice portrait. Uh, and I said that to them, and they said to me, that guy was a real, hmm. you know what? And, and, and I thought to myself, every time she looks at that portrait, that great portrait, she remembers that asshole. Yeah, you know? no matter how good the and photo is. And it's like, you know, so it's like, that's really important stuff, you know. It's just like, Absolutely. wow, you know. And it's if, if people can say, you know, wow, what a great portrait. And, and they can say, yeah, we had a blast, you know. Absolutely. It's so fun out there, you know. He was so nice and so helpful and so, you know, um, just the experience is huge. That's really good. 
That was really good. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll shift gears a little bit and talk about how your progression to shooting with mirrorless. So you said up until a few gear years ago you were shooting on Canon mm -hmm. DSLR. Um, what kind of got you interested in mirrorless in general? It was all me. It was all me. <laughs> it was you. It was you. I was, again, you know, I mean, I can't help but think about, you know, I was thinking today about all of that, and I thought, yeah, it was actually literally your fault, Garrett. Um, sure enough, we were at WPPI. Yeah. Garrett had that little uh, uh, Fuji Color uh, E2. Yeah, e X1. X e X e X e X e X e XE2. XE2, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Isn't XE2. it? Is it the one that had Wi Fi? I'm not sure. Not anyway. Yeah, it had Wi Fi. Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I was really, really impressed. And I had, had some awareness of them, but oh so subtle sure. of an awareness of them. And I had, uh, um, and I kind of had no respect for them anyway, at least at that point before I saw Garrett's and, and et cetera, uh, because they were uh, a crop sensor. And I just thought crop sensors were not a good idea anyway. Um, and uh, because of the way I shoot, and because I want to control depth of field and so on. And sure. not that you can't with a crop sensor, but you know what I'm saying. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it was actually, I bought an XC2 uh, and uh, just followed after little, you know, little Garrett, you know, and, and <laughs> okay, not little Garrett, but. <laughs> Did you buy it at the WBI booth? Yeah, I came home with it. Yeah. I wanted more megapixels. Uh, you know, the work we do, we do a lot of retouching, that sort of thing, and it's nice to have just for that alone. And, and I really also just like having a lot of megapixels and a bigger sensor too for cropping. Right. You know, as much as I'd love to think that, you know, we don't have to crop things, and that's unfortunately the way my brain works most of the time. Right. Um, it, um, it is nice to, to be able to crop when you need to, sure. and, and those cameras really let you do that. Uh, so I didn't do that much pro work with it. And uh, then, really, quite frankly, again, you know, Garrett, you know, <laughs> You know, starts fault. shooting. Actually, frankly, it was a it was a first cousin once removed that lives in uh, uh, Boston. Uh, that really, really, he put one in my hands. He had a uh, uh, an A7R, and the uh, the 90 millimeter ma millimeter macro and the uh, the Distagon 35 1.4. And uh, I had a, I was literally up at my cousin's house and we're hanging out and. You know, he says, hey, check this out, you know. And he's a video guy, by the way. Interesting. You know, so, so check that out. Uh, and I was really impressed. In fact, I had him bring it down to the studio uh, because one of the questions I had, one of the concerns I had was using it in the studio because of the live view and so on and it was funny because we had to like figure our way through the menus to because he'd never even shot it though he had no reason to he's a video guy sure. you know but uh so we had to kind of fight our way through the menus and figure out how to do it and all that and um and then i was like you know i was on a mission from god at that point you know i was like sell the fuji stuff you know <laughs> you know and i still have a lot of respect for them i just think that um I still feel like for people like myself, the Sony's a better choice. Sure, absolutely. And so by that point, you were done with DSLRs in general? Yeah, it's interesting because I, have, I still have several DSLRs and uh, uh, I'm, I'm ready to sell one more anytime. Uh, but um, uh, I, you know, they're still around and I still have several Canon lenses that I use with the Metabones adapter right. on the Sony. Uh, and that works generally great. Whenever you switch to mirrorless, what type of hurdles did you have to go through and what tips can you give people that uh, might make their transition a little bit easier? Wow. How about, let me tell you why I like mirrorless. Sure, absolutely. Because it's interesting. Um, there are... Uh, people who are saying, well, you know, those cameras really aren't that smaller. And this is all about size, right? You know, um, uh, I think it's great that they're a little smaller. Uh, I think it's really great that they're a little smaller. And uh, I'm sorry, I disagree. You know, I'm shooting, I'm shooting, this, I'm shooting my, you know, my, 
what is this camera? Hey, seminar. Funny how when you do this all the time, you kind of forget what you use. It's just yeah. like, it's my camera, man. Yeah. But anyway, it's I'm, your, I'm shooting. And it's like an extension of Yeah, you. right. Uh, so I'm shooting an A7R2. I've got the vertical battery grip on it, which I love. I resisted it because I didn't want it to get bigger, but I love it, you know, and I can't think of not, you know, of not having it. Right. The 8514, which, and I always use shades, you know, which right. is like, um, to me, it's just like, that's a no brainer. Right. Carrot. Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, um, you know, and, and it's smaller. Absolutely. You know, it feels great in my hands, but that's not what it's all about anyway. I would, I would be shooting these things if they were just as big. Uh, because what I think is really great about them, it just makes a lot of sense what you're doing with these cameras. Uh, the, uh, the way the, uh, excuse me, help me, the uh, focus systems, there's the contrast and the phase detection. Phase yeah, the phase detection focusing uh, is great. Uh, I'm totally sold on the uh, the live view viewfinder, and of course you can set a Canon or other cameras up to live view on the back of the camera. But that's no comparison to what you can do with these cameras. Looking through a viewfinder that not only shows me my focus, not only is who knows how many times brighter than looking through uh, a DSLR is. Uh, not not only shows me composition, focus, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, depth of field, also shows me exposure. I can look through my camera and say, whoa, that's backlit. I need to open up because it's dark in there, you know? So that instant live feedback, uh, which feels like it might only appeal to one who is a dummy. No. <laughs> no way. One, who, one who doesn't understand photography enough to know that, well, if that scene is backlit, I need to open up. Uh, it, it's, it's great. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Being able to view th look through the camera and see what's happening, even with exposure, is, is, uh, is a huge thing. It's probably one of the huger things for me. Sure, sure. What about the autofocusing on the camera? And it's working really, really well. I, I totally love it. Uh, I was um, influenced uh, somewhat um, early on when I, when I purchased the camera. I'm looking at YouTubes all over the place and trying to get every piece of information I can. And I actually saw, as it turns out, it was Gary Fong. Mm -hmm. uh, who said, you know, if you buy this camera and, and set it up so it works like your Canon or your Nikon or whatever you used before, don't do it. You know, you, you know it's, it's like, you know, you need to figure out, use and trust the autofocus because it works, you know, and it does really, really work. It's pretty um, insane. So, yeah, I love the autofocus. I love the eye focus with the, with the dedicated uh, Sony lenses, Sony and Sony's ice lenses. Um, that's huge, especially with these really fast lenses. It just yeah. nails them, you know, totally that's nails great. them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, by the way, another thing that I do that uh, uh, frequently with the, uh, with the camera when I'm working outdoors with people, a lot of times, especially with moms, I'll, uh, when it's in review, I'll put it in review mode and I'll have them put the camera up to their face to look at, to look at review, to review images as opposed to trying to look at the back of the camera. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's bright, and it's reflecty, and it's kind of what people are used to seeing anyway. You put that viewfinder up to their eye and they look at the reviews and you can just like see them light up because it's like really bright and really crisp in there and suddenly, and, and it's kind of isolating anyway, right? right? You know, So it's just kind of like, you know, looking through a Viewmaster, but it's your photos, you know? So why don't, um we talk about just some quick tips or, you know, tips that you've learned over the years for maybe new photographers or someone who's wanting to increase their skill level. Um, what can they do to improve that? I think we've touched a little bit on it maybe, but mm -hmm. um, just general tips for photographers. Well, I think um, especially today when I think about, um, needless to say, I'm constantly aware of new photographers. And one of the things I think that it would be really wise for new photographers to do is like really, really learn about photography. Unfortunately, it's really easy now to pick up a camera that's fairly automatic and, and um, if you've got a good eye, take some pretty great pictures. Sure. You know, lenses aren't bad and uh, for, for a relatively small amount of money, you can buy a camera that with a good eye you can take pretty great photos with. Um, but, you know, if you don't understand photography, then you can't really control things. Uh, I do, one of the things I do on a pretty regular basis is commercial work. And when I'm doing commercial work, for example, what happens frequently is people, uh, a client will come to me and they'll say, this is what we want you to do. 
and this is what we want it to look like. You know, they've got something that someone else has done, another, an ad from a different company, or any number of things, and this is what we want it to look like. I can't, I can only do that if I know what I'm doing. I can only do that if I understand light, sure. and I understand exposure, and I can look at the photo and, and figure out what was done, how did they get that feel, that look, you know, and, and it could be any, any number of things. So I think, you know, evolving for more than, for more than uh, uh, just a good picture taker mm -hmm. to being a, a genuinely professional photographer, you have to, to thoroughly learn photography. Uh, it's, it's like we said a little bit ago when we were talking about the whole scenario of people coming and having a good experience. You know, you've, you've, got, to, you've got to understand photography. Uh, you need to, to, to study uh, uh, with other, under other photographers if necessary. In fact, it's an excellent way to do it. Uh, things that like lighting and, and composition and so on. And even watching people work with, with uh, models is huge. I remember seeing a, a, a guy years and years ago that played a huge role in, and I think to this very day, how I interact with people. Because I was sort of primed for it at the time, and I really liked him, and I just, I think, you know, I just kind of in, unconsciously picked up a lot on, on the way he works with people. Um, and, and again, that's a huge thing. Uh, you can uh, get nice results. By not with ne without understanding photography completely, you can get you know you can get nice results without understanding any of those things completely. But to like take it to the next level and turn out consistently great results, it, you've got to have that stuff, you know. So education, 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 and, so and you know, and I think the professional associations are. Sure. I think they're a really, really good way to do it. Sure, absolutely. I mean, and even this day, I feel like education is maybe even easier to come by than it was when you were mm -hmm. learning because people are more willing to give up their trade secrets, mm -hmm. you know, like on, on YouTube channels, even, even um, you know, like going to things like WPPI and things like that because um, you're, you're going to get hands-on experience at those type mm -hmm. of places and, and you get to watch people do it too. So just education. Right. Learn. Right. Learn your craft. Yep, yep. Yep. Learn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very profound right. because a lot of people think that it's easy. <laughs> two two other yeah. things you know to keep in mind too. One one would be again, and we mentioned this briefly, but I think shadowing with a genuinely professional photographer is a really good thing. Even if you can, if even if you can't get paid to be their assistant, if you right. can just shadow with somebody that's really good, you can learn a lot. And you really pay close attention to what's going on. Uh, that's that's a big deal. And I think the other thing too is that although you need good gear, you also don't want to get too immersed in in gear, right. and, and thinking that you know uh, that next lens is going to turn you into right. a way better photographer. You know yeah. because uh, I'm. As guilty as the next for being a bit of a toy boy, but yeah. you know, but sure. you know, but but at the same time, I, I I clearly I understand that picking up that next new lens isn't going to cause people right. to make my phone ring. But yeah, so we've actually really had to overcome that as well. You know, gear acquisition. We just at one point you think more equals better. And so we have totally stripped down to the bare bones this year. And now we, can, we roll up with a think tank bag and a bag for tripods and monopods. And that's it. Whereas we used to come up with a huge Pelican case and another one for our lighting and, you know, a Ronin. And we realized that you don't need all of that to make your, your work better. You know, more does not equal better. And that's really something that is hard to get over because when you first start out, you want to just get all the things and that doesn't necessarily make you better learning your craft and educating yourself and what you're doing is gonna make you better then. Mm -hmm. yeah that's funny because I've kind of gone through that exact transition this year I'm carrying less gear to jobs sure. almost always years ago I took four I shot four Hasselblads at weddings wow. four Hasselblads though that's yeah, quite yeah, uh, yeah, quite yeah, a okay. kit <laughs> Yeah, and in those days I was doing weddings, I would always shoot solo. It was nuts, you know. I was like, oh. you know, <laughs> come home and sleep for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Are you okay? <laughs> Not okay. I don't know what okay. Beer. Give me beer. beer. <laughs> yes. So we want to know what's in your bag. So should we break it down to like what's in your bag for a senior shoot? Let's say maybe mm -hmm. maybe these people want to know like what's in your gear case kit mm -hmm. for a senior shoot? It's pretty light, really. When I do seniors, uh, these days it's rare that I do. Uh, I shoot with anything except uh, the 85 millimeter 1.4, uh, which is my favorite. Uh, the at this point the Canon 7200 f2.8 with the Metabones adapter, um, and the uh, occasionally the 55 millimeter f1.8 Zeiss Carl, uh, Sony Zeiss lens. Um, now and then a, a Canon 70 to uh, 24 to 70 f2.8. Uh, pretty rarely, now and then, and in fact today, as it turns out, the um, uh, 21 millimeter f 2.8 uh, Zeiss Loxia lens, okay. um, which is like also like one of my newest acquisitions, and I really really love it. It's 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 a it's a sweet it's a sweet one, you know. With the Sony, it's easy again. It's like we were talking about. It's so easy to fanboy or to just gush over these because you know. Everything from being able to shoot at those a lower ISO in the same environment because you know it's capturing light better. Um, it's just totally transformed our way of shooting and stuff. So you know the 1600 ISO on that is going to look better than the 1600 ISO on right. another system. Let's say that. So it's it's really just made our lives so much easier, and it sounds like it's made your life a little bit easier too. Oh, absolutely, for sure. sure. I love it. What is your favorite feature about shooting mirrorless? It would have to be the live viewfinder, sure. and and the fact that in certain environments it makes it so easy also to have an instant review, like without taking your eye away from the camera. It's interesting because sometimes doing that, you can like be literally shooting, shooting, talking, shooting, and each time seeing the preview come through, and the client doesn't even. There's no awareness of that. Sure. So it's like, let's shoot one more. So you're not chimping, like you're not looking and at the back. I'm screen. not looking at the back of the camera. I'm looking through the camera. I'm seeing it as it comes up. I see a blink. I don't say, oh, you blinked on that one. Yeah. You know, I can just say, okay, let's do it again. Here we go, boom, boom. You know, and it's just like I see the, I see the magic, you know, and when the shot pops up and it's like, okay, we did that. Let's, you know, and it's, so it's, it makes that move really smooth and being able to see the exposure in a viewfinder. I think about, for example, uh, situations like, it, for example, at a wedding, in a wedding environment, um, uh, I might be doing one of the things we still do is formals. People want those photos, you know, their family and yeah. their wedding party and that sort of stuff. And what I typically do is mix ambient light with some strobe, sure. you know, light in the box kind sure. of thing or something like that as a, as a main light, but but do a balancing act with the ambient light. It is so easy with that camera, and to be able to see it as you shoot and know that things are where they are, sure. uh, it just it, it 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 causes you to move smoother. It makes it less likely you're going to screw up, you know, unless you're just like you said, chimping your way along all right. the time, you know. Right. And that takes you out of the moment when you start chimping and looking. Like even as filmmakers, when we see a photographer chimping, it like you're not paying attention to what's going on around, mm -hmm. you know, like you're not seeing what is, you know, the in sometimes the in-between moments are just as good or if not better than the ones that mm -hmm. are posed, spe you know, oh, specifically. Right. So mm -hmm. um, seeing that live view, I'm sure has really helped your, your mm -hmm. photography, your style, like the way. Right. And, and, and yeah, and it is, it is one of the, uh, probably one of the, the bigger part, a game changer parts of it for me, you know. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. It was our pleasure talking to you, and thank you for taking the time to um, talk to us and give us a little bit of your knowledge. You know, I've, we really respect you, and we know that you've been doing this for a long time, so we're really happy that you have um, agreed to do this for our channel. You're welcome. I'm happy to have done it. It's been fun. Good, good. You're, you're a natural, though. I feel like that just didn't take any time at all. Again, thank you all for tuning into our channel. Please make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Or no, that's not right. <laughs> you subscribe to our channel, like the video. Thank you all again for hanging out with us today. We really appreciate it. And <laughs> please make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and LLAP friends.
<laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> My hand wouldn't do it. It's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Have to practice that. <laughs>